Hello and welcome to GameSack. Before, we've talked about games that were left in Japan that should have come out to the U.S. Yeah, that's right, Dave. But this time we're talking about games that came out in the U.S., but they really had no right coming out here because, well, they kind of suck. Yes, they do. You know, this time around we're going to focus on the Genesis games that meet this criteria of suckiness, even though the games might not be exclusive to that system. That's true, and we're also talking about Sega CD and 32X games if they qualify, so... What games have you chosen for us first, Dave? Well, I'm going to show you those games, but first I want to say this is probably going to be a controversial episode, Joe, because somebody out there is bound to like some of the games that we're talking about. Ah, uh, very true, very true. You know what? I'm sorry, though, guys. Life is not full of lollipops and cuddly puppies, so... Oh. <laughs> I know. Let's get to it. Pac-Man 2. The New Adventure is a Strange Game. In this game, you see what Pac-Man's life is really like, and it's kind of sad. He has a wife that tells him what to do, a baby that likes to cry, and a person he can't see, you, that shoots him with a slingshot and yells at him. I'm really surprised he's not an alcoholic. Anyways, you don't control Pac-Man directly in this game, but you control a slingshot that helps Pac-Man get to his desired goal. And as I said before, you can also yell at him, which makes him change directions and look around. Yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah, he doesn't listen very well, man. It's an interesting idea, but it's very frustrating because it usually takes multiple attempts to get Pac-Man to do what he needs to do. You're constantly pointing at things for him to look at, and he just doesn't seem to ever see what you're pointing at. What? 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 He was so responsive in the original game, which you can also play here in this version, by the way. I can't believe that this game is considered the true sequel. He also has this really annoying sound that comes out of him. It's a very whiny sound that starts to grate on your nerves quickly as he's constantly whining. <laughs> Graphically, the game is good. It has lots of nice colors and the artwork is pretty good. Eh, could be better. The music is not good at all. It's about as entertaining as a Saturday morning cartoon. Personally, this game was just uninteresting and frustrating to control. Jewel Master is another game with an interesting idea, but overall it ends up being just another action platformer. The idea in this game is to collect rings to equip on your left and right hands. Interestingly, you can only use two rings per hand despite having a total of ten fingers. Yeah, they can't count, that's for sure. You can equip rings that give you abilities of flame, barrier, speed up, and high jump. Of course, mixing rings gives you different and stronger abilities like a double jump, fireballs, or even an earthquake. While this adds a bit of depth to the gameplay, it's not enough to make the game stand out. Plus, you seem to spend a lot more time messing around with the rings than actually playing the game. The control of your character is good and responsive. The graphics are fine and have some decent colors. I thought that some of the graphics were fairly decent, but the rest of them seem rather chunky and bland in my opinion. The music is fair and has a few good melodies. As I was playing, I just felt that the game was nothing great and kept thinking about better games that I could be enjoying instead of this one. So, naturally I turned it off and went to a better option. What really disappoints me about this game is that your character could pass as a Belmont from Castlevania. You see the character and you expect a great game, but instead you get this. It's like having a character that looks like Sonic, but the game plays like Sonic Spinball. It's disappointing at best. Next up is Toki Going Ape Spit. I don't know about you, Joe, but when I first read the title of this game, I thought, with a title like this, this game just has to suck. And I was mostly right. Oh, no, man, that's just the inclusion of 90s Tude. You're supposed to read the title and think, this game is totally rad to the max. My parental units will be totally bugging. <laughs> well, I definitely did not think that, man. Well, you play as Toki, who was turned into an ape by some dude that stole his girlfriend. Apparently, Toki isn't in too much of a hurry to get Wanda back because he walks at a snail's pace. He always looks depressed and not like someone determined to get his woman back. Anyways, it's a standard action platform game, and Toki has a basic spit weapon but can collect different types of spit weapons throughout the levels. The graphics are pretty and have nice colors. I don't know, they seem kind of dark and ugly to me. That is today's pretty, Joe. The control of Toki is okay as he can shoot in many directions. As I said before, he moves very slowly, which is quite annoying. Oh, and the most annoying part is that there is absolutely no life bar. 
Toki can only take one hit before he dies. Then you start over again from the beginning of the round. Each stage is made up of three rounds plus a boss fight, so they are not huge, but just big enough to irritate you. The music in this game is completely forgettable. I tried thinking about one tune from the game after I turned the power off, but I couldn't. I guess I should be happy because I don't want to have a crappy song running through my head over and over. Indeed, especially since there is very little variety in the music here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Not only should this game have never left Japan, but it should have never been made, period. It's quite easy to see that this game was made just to cash in on the fighting game craze from Street Fighter 2. Like about a thousand other games back then. Huh, isn't that the truth? The problem is that it fails in so many ways that you almost pity the developers for being so uneducated on what makes a great fighting game. So the game has only two attack buttons, one for punching and the other is a kick button. You push up to jump and in the opposite direction to block. Standard stuff for a fighter, but there is very little depth when you only have a punch and a kick button. The few moves that the fighters have are ripped off from the Street Fighter 2 controls. The truly annoying part of this game, well, besides the horrible AI, is that there is absolutely no linking attacks. Once you hit somebody and knock them down, they are invincible until they stand up again. Really bad move, Konami. The enemy AI is super frustrating as the characters are really, really cheap. <laughs> The graphics in this game are decent, but nothing reminds me of Ninja Turtles as far as backgrounds go. Yeah, and why are all the stages different planets? Shouldn't they be locations in New York or whatever? And just how does April O'Neil how to fight like a badass? They were really stretching with the character selection here. But my favorite character is probably the one called Syphilis or something like that. Syphilis? Anyways, the music is pure garbage and matches the game perfectly. From what I understand, the SNES version of this game is infinitely better. Hell, people like the NES version better than this one. Avoid completely unless you're a collector. Wow, Dave, those are some pretty good, or should I say bad choices. Yes, they are, Joe. You know what? I actually have those games in my collection, believe it or not. But I never show them off to my friends because... You don't have any? No, oh. that's not it. It's just because they'd probably give me a bunch of crap for buying such horrible games. Well, you know, Dave, the games that you chose are like virtual masterpieces compared to what I chose. Is that a fact? Yes, I'm afraid it is. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm ready to see these games, but, you know, for the sake of the show, I think we should just keep moving. So okay. let's take a look at what you've got. Beast Wrestler came over to the U.S. courtesy of renovation. I don't know what they were thinking bringing this over, but they must have been desperate. You can play a tournament mode in which you'll get a wonderfully translated intro. Even a Bovis like me can handle this beast. That's right, Bovis. I suppose the B is pretty close to the N on the keyboard, but come on. Yeah, and they were simply too lazy to even press the space bar down here. It's clear that they didn't even look at this game before shipping it out. And I can't blame them. You start to match and what I think happens is that the game completely turns your controller off because it doesn't seem to work at all. I mean you can move around a bit and maybe wiggle a limb here and there, but generally it doesn't make a difference whether your controller is plugged in or not. And when you get knocked down it takes a month of Sundays to get back up. You just lay there, forever, but you're not defeated yet. But this game sure isn't in any hurry. You can select from a bunch of different beasts, none of them are anything special. The graphics are mediocre at best and the music sucks balls. This game was designed to cause harm to your genesis. Next up is Heavy Nova. This game is completely useless. The box claims that it's amazingly exciting, but I'm gonna have to respectfully disagree with that. This is another game that feels like your controller is constantly shorting out. You basically start each stage as a platformer and smash a few minor robots here and there. Your goal is to find the boss stage. The control is incredibly clunky. I think the developers must have thought this is how a robot should move. Very clunky and with a ton of effort. Yeah, and that always translates well into gaming. You need to hold the opposite direction for what feels like five minutes before you even turn around. You'll constantly be getting knocked down and hit by enemies with the insanely slow control and piss poor collision detection. 
and when you get to the boss of the stage and try to fight it, it's just as infuriating and makes you want to turn the game off. How come the enemy boss robots move way smoother than your robot? How come at certain times when your energy gets low and you get knocked down, it takes what seems like an eternity for your robot to actually move and get up? Well, I think it took a lesson from Beast Wrestler, or Beast Wrestler learned from this, I don't know. This game plays so cheaply that it even has a level select built right into the option screen from the start. This game was on CD in Japan, but the only thing different was the music. CD or cartridge, it was wrong and immoral to release this game over here. A sequel called Black Hole Assault came out near the launch of the Sega CD. Gone are the walking stages and thankfully now it's all just about the fighting. Crappy fighting though. It does control significantly better than Heavy Nova, but that's not saying a lot as it's still quite clunky. The robots that you get to choose from aren't anything special and none of them feature intuitive or even responsive controls. The game is completely unbalanced. Look at this, my opponent and I can't even touch each other as we jump back and forth. And here I fall over without even getting touched. But I can knee my opponent to death easily with this guy. This is ridiculous. But at least this game has some uh, semi-decent cutscenes and music. Yeah, they're okay. The music is probably the best thing about the game, even though it's not tremendously memorable. You can save your own progress and all that, but it's still very cumbersome to play and really not very noteworthy. The collision detection still sucks and brings this game way down. I think Butthole Assault would be a better name for this game because that's what it is. At least they had the sense to leave the PC Engine version in Japan. Ernest Evans is an incredibly stupid game. Ernest Evans is an incredibly stupid name. It's no Indiana Jones, which is obviously what they are trying to rip off here. And they did a horrible job doing that. You take control of this dashing young fellow. This game is actually a prequel to the excellent El Viento, which was released the year before, but Ernest just gets so many things wrong. First of all, the control is just horrendous. I partially blame the weird marionette construction of your character as you have to wait for him to fold or unfold to a certain position just so you can do what you need to do. You can get caught up bouncing off of the enemies and other objects to the point where it's just laughably bad. Speaking of laughably bad, check out his whip skills. Ernest Evans is no Simon Belmont. Try figuring out how to swing on the hooks in this game. This game is fairly difficult at first, but you'll eventually get the hang of it, not that you'd want to. Even after you do, the game offers very little redeeming value. The graphics aren't very colorful, have repetitive tiles, and tons upon tons of flicker and slowdown, just like all Wolf Team games. The music isn't too bad, but again, it sounds like all other Wolf Team games. In Japan, this game existed only on CD. There's a border up top underneath the score, which is higher, but other than that, the only differences are the music and, of course, more cutscenes. Oi. It's all very ambitious, but I'm surprised they followed through all the way to release. And as always, Renovation will release anything they can get their hands on. Check this out! I'm hitting myself and I'm not even touching the controls! I just committed suicide! Cosmic Carnage is an early fighting game for the 32X. In fact, it's only one of three true fighting games for the system. You know, Joe, that's actually a pretty good percentage of figuring the 32X add-on only had like uh, 20 games or something silly like that. You know, that's actually true. Anyway, you start out as always by selecting a character and then choosing what armor to wear. Why you wouldn't want to wear all of your armor is beyond me. But anyway, one of the big selling points of this game was that you could knock pieces of armor off each other. And of course, since this was a 90s fighting game, there's copious amounts of blood. Gee, thanks Mortal Kombat. As you fight, it can scale in or out, similar to Samurai Showdown and games of that nature. 
you have four attack buttons, basically just like Mortal Kombat without the block button. But the fighting action here is slow and sometimes choppy. It's not even very interesting when you're winning. None of the characters are appealing at all. They're all just basically bugs, monsters, robots, or even some sort of alien cobra with a bra. Yeah, when the characters aren't interesting, even the best fighting games fail. Every fighting game has a few uninteresting characters, but in this game, the whole lot are boring. Yep. Graphically, the game's not too bad. With the exception of the sluggish frame rate, the colors and whatnot are mostly pretty good. The music is also very well done for the most part. But decent graphics and great music don't make a good game. This game just helped prove that Sega really didn't believe in the 32X. Joe, those are definitely some nasty games, and you know what? They've left me really, really ill. Indeed, but believe it or not, Dave, those aren't even the worst games for this system. In fact, Western developers made some really, really bad stuff. Maybe someday we'll show them. Oh, God, I hope not, but, you know, that, that can't be all of the bad games out of Japan for this system, right? Oh, no, no. In fact, here's a lot more games that should have never shown their face over here in the condition they were in. Oh, God. Man, Joe, those were some bad, bad games, mm -hmm. you know, and I think if we actually did an episode based on Western developed games in the same manner, we're going to start losing subscribers. You know, that's kind of an interesting hypothesis. Uh, what would you guys like to see? Would you guys like to see us talk about Western developed Genesis games? You know, let us know. Well, and on that note, I hate to say it, but GameSack is going to be going bi-weekly permanently. Yes. Well, having a family takes up a lot more time than one would think, and... You know, putting out a bi-weekly show will ensure that quality that you guys have kind of come to expect from us and uh, gives us a chance to actually ensure that quality. So, and it also makes my family quite content. <sighs> well, I guess we'll see you in two weeks then with a new episode. Jeez, Dave, now I'm depressed. Well, I was too, Joe, but you know what? You'll get over it. <sighs>
Yeah, hello, Micronet. Yeah, I'd like to make a complaint. Well, I had this game you made called Heavy Nova, and it's caused me some really deep emotional scars. Basically, I'm calling to see what kind of free stuff I'm rightfully entitled to to make it all better. What do you mean you do graphical design for websites now? Now, I already have a website. Yes, it's definitely already very crappy. What else do you guys do? No, I don't need anyone kidnapped. You know, well, maybe Dave. He wants GameSack to go bi weekly. Can you believe that? Uh, who's that? Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, extra pepperoni on that, definitely. How long does it take to deliver that from Japan?